hello, how are you? Hope y'all are doing great. This is a very fast recap of the National Corvette Museum's Bash Corvette Update. So let me go ahead and give you all the information that I cared to go through at this time. It will not be everything, but it's everything that I could mash into this 10 minute video. And so uh, let's just move on with it really quick. Here we go. This presentation from the National Corvette Museum's Bash on April 23rd was hosted by Taj, Harlan, and Josh. Taj is the executive chief engineer. Harlan is the product marketing manager. And Josh is the vehicle chief engineer. While this was a very nice update, that's all it was. Not hardly anything new to me in this. Just a few little gems here and there. Their camera, while taking this video, captured, I believe, Rick Conti, who is a Corvette uh, salesman. Very, very good Corvette salesman. Does YouTube video, and he is extremely trustworthy. So you might enjoy looking this guy up on YouTube, and the gentleman he's talking to might be the Chevy dude. While this slide came from the previous day's presentation, Taj mentioned that these pandemic problems are way underrated. So he really wanted to hit that home so people knew that raw material issues are very real and very important. They spent several minutes discussing all of the awards that they have won and the fact that the awards keep rolling in. So some of the awards were like the Best Convertible, Car and Drivers Awards, and the Best Year Round Daily Car, and Best Resale Value from Kelly Blue Book. Then they briefly discussed the 40th year Bowling Green plant uh, anniversary. And again, they did their version of comparing the C3 to the C7, which was kind of cool. Next was the statistics regarding sales for the C8 Corvette. And so starting up in the top left corner, for example, they compared coupes versus convertibles. 59% of the sales were in coupes, 41% for the convertibles. The majority of the coupes that were sold were at the 2LT level, and the majority of the convertibles that were sold were at the 3LT level. Roughly six 2LT coupes for every one 3LT convertible, both of them making up about 49% of all the sales. So anyway, they go through some of the different paints, uh, the roofs, uh, let's see here, brakes, uh, seats, you know, different, different things, different wheels. So a lot of neat statistics here. And next is the statistics on the exterior paints with the torch red being at the highest. And at the very bottom was the Zeus bronze, of course. So you can kind of look at that, these color codes, and see, you know, at the very top is what sold the most. At the bottom is what did not sell very well. Then they briefly touched on, I'm calling this, they say deliveries, but it's, you know, comparing the C8 Corvette to their competition, basically Porsche, BMW, Lamborghini, Ferrari. And you'll see at the very top is Corvette. It outsold everybody by a long shot. So the C8 Corvette in the segment and the choices that they put into this chart, uh, it sold 43%. So, I mean, nothing comes close to that. The 911 came in at just under 12%. 
So these numbers are pretty phenomenal, and I would say it's a fairly fair uh, comparison. So, you know, the Corvette is obviously a fantastic selling car. They quickly touched on attracting new customers and retaining loyal customers. So two things I thought that was really cool from this was for people in their 40s and 50s, they have doubled their sales to that age group. For people in their 30s, they have increased their sales by a good 10%. Uh, to me, those are really great numbers. They discussed the racing team and their personnel, but for this video, I'm going to have to skip over that. Now, finally getting up to about halfway through the video at the 28 minute mark, they get to the what's new for 2021. Now within this, there are lots of topics. To give a real quick idea of this segment of the presentation, uh, magnetic ride, wireless phone projection, super cool, like that. The driver modes, uh, that was a pretty good little segment. Uh, the seats, contrast, you know, that is super cool, I like that. Uh, a recap on the exterior colors again, and striping and such for personalization. And they reviewed again the right-hand drive, which Apparently, this is the first VET in history for right-hand drive. I was not aware of that. And then, like you may already know, the new low-profile spoiler. So those are some of the ideas of what they went over in this segment. Finally, we get to the questions and answers. And I've only got three things here that I picked out. Uh, first off, all of the 2021s currently on order should get built. That is the plan. And as Harlan said, it's our goal. So they said it's not a promise, but so long as everything goes as planned, they will get them done. So be looking for all the 2021s getting built ASAP. Second topic, rain sensing wipers. They are not going to be doing that yet. It involves adding a sensor that is up by the rear uh, mirror, rear view mirror in the center of the window, and they just don't really want to do that right now. And then the last one that I liked was they talked about uh, the front grills, uh, radiator grills, and they were saying, you know, they did not want to put any other meshes up there because it blocks some of that cooling capability and so they warn everybody, be careful what you do. If you're going to track the car, you should not have any grill protectors up there in the front. Now, if you're not going to track the car, then be very particular as to what you buy. Be very careful. They also mentioned that in July, the 2022 orders should start implying that the 2021s should be ending. Uh, the online visualizer should be up by July or even a little before that so that people can get started with it. And finally, just like in the previous presentation from the day before, they will not discuss future projects. So they would not answer any questions about the Z06, the E-Ray, or anything else. All right, that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe down below. Thank you very much. Uh, hope you like this recap. And I think I should have the link down below to the National Corvette Museum's video itself. And anyway, it was very informative, had all kinds of good goodies in it. So, except for some of the things that I really wanted to know, which is, hey, when's my Corvette going to be ready? Gosh, go figure. So, anyway, but it was a fine video. And, you know, with that, I guess, relax, take it easy, and I will see you later. Bye.